Well, here we are, working from home today. Um, and what a day it is. It's supposed to have been the first day of freedom, hasn't it? But poor old Boris has been uh, pinged. And so even though he's had two jabs and he's had the convids himself, so he's got probably more antibodies than a scientist apron, uh, he's uh, locked away somewhere in the spare room in Chequers, uh, pulling his hair out. <laughs> It might improve it, actually. Um, and so, Boris, it's time now to stop this ridiculous pinging situation where people, where there's nothing wrong with them at all, have to isolate. You know, you, you, you wonder why you can't get served in a restaurant. You wonder why you can't do this, that and the other. We've got to stop this pinging people and telling them they've got to isolate because they walked 300 yards past someone that might have had it from a friend they got pinged with from a cousin that they knew who knew their gardener that worked there two years ago before the COVID. So it's absolutely bloody ridiculous. I see now that Andrew Lloyd Webber has had to cancel Cinderella for a night, or I don't know, it was in the mail, so you'd never know what's going on there. Um, but because someone in the cast uh, got pinged and so right this is the great thing about my tour and my summer season shows that start uh, in a couple of weeks time there's only me and so I don't want to go near anybody so I'm double jabbed I'm fit as a you know butcher's dog <sighs> touch wood and uh, and so my tour will be going on because it's only me the only person that can affect me by being pinged and not turning up to work doesn't really matter. All I need is an audience and a stage. I don't need a microphone. Al Jolson never needed a microphone when he was on stage in front of a thousand people in New York and he stood there and he sang his heart out for two hours and at the end they all stood up as one man and shouted, we couldn't hear a thing. <laughs> so listen, I've been double jabbed, I'm on tour, I'm doing the summer season. Come and have a laugh. Have a look at my website and pick up some things. Now, a lot of you still don't quite grasp what Ustream is. Ustream is a station, right? It is a television station, and it's got four or five channels. One of the channels is called Cenotaph, where we're showing veterans talking to one another and other military-type associated and veteran things. But the best channel on it, of course, is JDTV. Oh. I mean, well, I would say that, wouldn't I? So we have these little things, and what I talk about is ridiculous news. Here we go. Uh, so the lobster bill. Have you heard about the lobster bill? Right. Lobsters are now apparently being treated, or can be being treated, as sentient beings, which means you can't eat anything that knows it what it is. What's that mean? Jesus. Right, so I don't eat lobster anyway. It's sea cockroach. Anyway, uh, and then, of course... I read with, with interest today about the cancel culture uh, that we have. Katie Hopkins uh, has been thrown out of Australia uh, for some reason. There's got to be some other uh, reason there. I don't suppose you could throw someone out just for telling a joke. You can't cancel people for telling a joke, can you? Although Jimmy Carr, who I love actually, he's a really, really great bloke and he's quite funny, quite quirky. Some hit stony ground, don't they? And he said, he said, I've already told the joke uh, that will get me cancelled and he's, he's probably right as well he's a naughty boy but the other day you know i was watching this that uh, i read about a guy who was fired from gb news for taking the knee well that's bloody ridiculous isn't it, eh? it and nigel farage says he's not taking the knee so it all depends what which way your boss swings if you get me if you can be cancelled i don't think you should cancel anyone for anything it's ridiculous that bloke who took the knee what difference does it make let him take the knee so we don't have to speak to him or go to dinner if you don't think that's a good idea but if someone wants to take the knee you don't want to cancel them as well it's absolutely bloody ridiculous lee ryan look at lee ryan well, don't look at Lee Ryan. Lee Ryan, I was in a Big Brother house with him. Boo, he, he is the most unracist, untransphobic, homophobic person you could ever bloody meet. Now he's been accused, right, of, of being transphobic and homophobic because he stated he wants to identify as a, he can identify as a woman if he wants. Well, he can. Uh, but he also said he can identify as an alien, which he can. I'm identifying uh, as uh, Brad Pitt. That's fair enough. But so... Is he going to be cancelled? I don't think he's doing anything, thank heavens, but he's a really good bloke. And why are they picking on him? Oh, dear. I tell you what, just as well a lot of people don't watch Ustream, otherwise I'd be cancelled overnight. Now, I have a present for you people who watch me on YouTube, seeing as you don't watch a lot of Ustream. That is interesting, though. When I did Red, White and Blue Nose Day, we had 5,000 people, because it was free, 5,000 extra people watched it on the night. 
So I'm going to give you a little little snippet of what happens on Ustream on Sunday Night Live. And so, to end this YouTube piece, here is Sticky Vicky with a piece from Sunday Night Live in a section that we call Don't Listen With Mother. Enjoy it, and I'll see you on Ustream. Join up. Seriously, join up. F -f join up. Hello, children. It's time for today's story. In fact, today's story was given to me by Uncle Bobby, and it's called The Chocolate Story. Mr. Cadbury met Mrs. Roundtree at the Star Bar, just after eight. After a celebration, they shared a bus home. It was a double-decker. They got off at Quality Street. What's your name, he asked. My name's Polo. I'm the one with the hole, she said, in a whisper. What's your name? I'm Frere Rocher, and I'm the one with the nuts, he said, in a flaky tobler tone. He said, I reckon we could be a matchmaker in heaven. Do you fancy coming on a picnic tomorrow? I'll give you a good time out. Oh, that would be a treat, she said. Be a poppet and pick me up from my Mars house at 2pm. And don't be late, smarty pants. And don't forget to pack your caramac in case it rains. The next day, he picked her up in his taxi. It was a Ford Galaxy, tell a lie. Oh no, it was a, a mini Rolls. As they drove past the aeroport and onto the Hershey Highway, they started a conversation. And the topic soon got around to sex. Well, it was bound to happen. It wasn't long before he was up to his dirty twix. He stopped the car. He leant over and started to undo her chocolate buttons and started to maul and tease her, which came as a kinder surprise to her. All of a sudden, he grabbed hold of her and started to wrap his wine gums around her gobstopper, which made her ripple from her head right down to her mint toes. As he was sucking her Tic Tacs and rubbing her licorice, she stuck her hands in his fries and pulled out his Willy Wonka. She said, I'm kinky. I'm into M&Ms. I like to be walnut whipped. That gave him a boost. Roll over. Roll over, he asked. So she did. She did a twirl. And they ended up doing it the Milky Way. <laughs> the Milky Way. He said, we'd better be careful. I don't want to put you in the Jacob's Club and end up having any jelly babies or Milky Bar kids being born -villed. Well, they had a marathon session. He reveled in it and she screamed out in Turkish delight. Sadly, three days later, he woke up and his sherbet dip dab was all itchy. Naughty Mrs. Roundtree. When it came to the crunchy, She'd been out with Bertie Bassett the week before, and he had all sorts. <laughs>